Hey, this is another Stranger Gamer. This is Tristan, and I'm here with Gabe again. I think hey. it's going to become a regular thing. Um, and we're here to talk about, I guess, uh, like the Ouya stuff going on recently and, in general, Kickstarter. Because um, yeah. recently the Ouya was released to no one's knowledge, basically, at least yeah, to retail. Yeah, like, I thought it was months away. I knew that like, they were sending out... Uh... Like pre-release out, stuff. Yeah, the pre-release stuff and the people who, who had backed it and all that stuff. But I did they say anywhere it was going to be this early? <laughs> I guess. I, did, I didn't even know it was going on. I read a thing on Polygon about the retail release. And I guess even people you know working in retail didn't know it was. Yeah. You know. I, I saw like an interesting thing. I think it was like it was GameStop and one other store. They said they sold out. But that was because they got like five in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. But I, I think that <laughs> it doesn't need to be huge a retail, personally. I, a lot of people are saying this is a failure, but, I mean, there's other reasons for it to be a failure. But I don't oh, think yeah. it needs to be big. <laughs> I don't think it needs to be big at retail because it's a Kickstarter thing, right? Like, that's its whole appeal is that it's, like, an Internet thing. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, Well, I mean, I guess in a sense, uh, when you think about, like, Square Enix or companies like that, when they say that uh, Tomb Raider, which sold, well, like, three and a half million or whatever <laughs> in the first month, was a failure – uh, there's no way that game didn't make back the budget and then some. It's just that they're investors and like they're uh, the the people who were buying into the company. Uh, they wanted to see more growth mm-hmm. or whatever. The, the thing about Ouya is, as it's a Kickstarter back project, basically as soon as they break even, it's a success. Yeah. They don't have anyone to answer to. Exactly. Uh, so it's like its own yeah Kickstarter yeah. thing. I just I fail to see any reason to be interested in it, honestly. Uh, so do I. I saw my first, uh, there was a pre-roll ad. I don't even remember what I was watching, but it was an Ouya exclusive game. Uh, oh, God, what was it called? It, it had a name that made it seem like it was another game. Oh, it was like Chrono something. Oh. And it had nothing to do with Chrono Trigger. It was, yeah. it was like a beat-em-up or something. And it looked interesting, but it also, you know, because it's Android, it looked like it could have been, you know, played on a phone. Uh I, I saw Jeff Gersman tweeting out that he he said the controller felt terrible, felt like a knockoff third party controller, and it just looks it nice looks that. ugly. The, the yeah. system itself, it's like it, it's very Apple of them to make it very simple, very elegant. Yeah. But uh, and and actually, you know, because it's just such a, a kind of an underpowered piece of tech, it can be that small. And I have my own problem, even though I'm using a Mac with a uh, Apple trying to oversimplify, uh, and now Windows too with Windows eight, but uh. I I just really don't see the appeal. I don't know why anyone would see this on Kickstarter and think, huh, that's a good idea. I should back that. Well, I think the whole point of it was that it was an open, you know, yeah, development the, the feel to it. The whole open source thing is cool. Yeah. Um, but but then again, you know, if people want a good open source platform, they have the PC. <laughs> yeah. They have uh, Android to, uh, too, which is yeah. you know, just as open. Because that's yeah. what's running on, and you know, there's I forgot the chip that's in the we are whatever. I'm not a huge tech guy like the inside, but I've you know read things. But basically, it's already in tablets that yeah. are are you know I guess like more expensive, but you can do more on them potentially. And the um, thing, the thing and, that makes it oh no, go ahead. Uh, there's also you know an HDMI cable, you know, uh, or an HDMI out on a lot of these tablets, so you could literally just plug it into your TV and have no need for that. Oh yeah, I guess except for the exclusive games. Right, and that's that's the the thing that kind of uh, I guess bugs me with the, with the other two systems, uh, especially with with the Xbox One. I think because most of most of Sony's games, I think, uh, realistically could be on the Xbox. It, it's just like the the Kinect. I think is the kind of kicker. But uh, most of the games that are on those systems that are exclusives could be on the other one. But then they also make games that could only be on. Xbox. I think um, I think Rise, for example, might be a game that really could only be on Xbox because of uh, kind of the the subtle motion, motion gestures and stuff. I don't see a game on Ouya that couldn't just have been on a phone, except that they paid the developer to make an exclusive yeah. title. Um, and obviously, there, th- that stuff still happens in consoles. I, Dead Rising, for instance, there's no way that couldn't have also been on the PS4, except yeah. that they paid for ex- exclusivity. That's business, but. When it's a console shipping like that, and that's all they have going for it, and the you know it's it's really hard to get behind it. I know the big name uh, developer who's making something for it was Robotoki, um, which is led by Robert Boeing, who used to be the creative strategist at uh, at Infinity Ward. I didn't even know about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember what he he's working on like three or four different games, and some of them are mo- mobile. This I don't even remember which. See, game that's the thing though. I 
I mean, I pay attention to gaming stuff, and I never heard of that, but that yeah. could just be me personally. But, like, how does that get beyond just the the niche of, the, you know, Internet people? You know Advertising, what I mean? Advertising, man. It's, and it's just, I, I said, until until after the console was already in stores, I didn't see a single ad for it. Me neither. And then I saw that one pre-roll ad, and I was like, huh? They're, they're advertising this? Okay, that's kind of, the game looks cool, but I'm sure I could play that on a zillion different platforms. Uh, and it's just, I, I just don't see the appeal. I don't see who they're trying to go after with this thing. Uh, and kind of this this Android game type thing, it's, uh, it's appealed, and it's become very, very successful because people are buying games with a device that they already own. Exactly. And they already use for a bunch of different things. I don't know why... Anyone would want to go out and buy this thing to play these games? Uh, the the real hardcore, you know, gaming community, uh, they have their devices, be it either the Xbox, the Wii U, the uh, the PlayStation, or the PC, and then maybe they'll play some games like I love Tiny Wings, but I have my phone, and I wouldn't buy another console to play freaking Tiny Wings. No yeah. way. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that like like you said, the success of Android and then iOS stuff is because it's already on the thing you have. So exactly. taking that to a hundred dollar dedicated console that gets updated physically like yeah. every year. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't translate quite as well. Okay, so with the you know the the uh, Ouya being kind of under the radar, do you think that you know this is telling of Kickstarter stuff just coming out and not really to being successful, even if their campaign raising the money has been successful? Yeah, I mean, it's we we need to see a project that actually uh, becomes a success after this happens. Because uh, think of think of it this way: uh, the, the the games that are coming out in the traditional fashion we consider successes if they then go on to sell four million copies. With Kickstarter, people are saying it's a success before it's even been given to consumers to you know judge or purchase. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's. I think it's going to be really telling. I think the the Ouya, I, I mentioned this before, but I think it's going to go down as a huge, huge failure because it's trying to tap a market that really does not exist. And uh, that that doesn't necessarily mean that all Kickstarters are going to be that way, but I think it's it's going to affect the way that, that people approach them. Um, there's some projects that did interest me. There's a dude's name, uh, I want to say it's like Glenn Stevenson. It's something Stevenson, but the guy, uh, he's like a, a Steam or cyberpunk uh, author who wanted to make like a sword fighting game, um, like a motion control one that looked really interesting and, st- and stuff like that, like new kind of cool ideas. Um, those I'm more okay with because mm-hmm. these are sometimes the only way these, these things get made, and that's not a – like from an ethical standpoint, those types of things I think are fine, and I think Ouya was fine from that from that standpoint, but I just don't think there's any appeal for it. Well, and I um, think that, you know, kickstarting a game and judging success after the fact is a lot easier to come by than a console, you know what I mean? Like absolutely, it, yeah. Being successful in terms of console making and in terms of game making are years. very different. Yeah. Um, um, and I can't think of anything major that's come out other than Ouya. I know the du- the Double Fine game got, you know, it was like the big yeah, Kickstarter it got push. Yeah, there's been, I think, what was it, Shenmue? There's talks of that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, Shenmue 3. The one that really, really uh, kind of was telling about how this program could be misused, I think, is with Precursor Games. Uh, oh, was Shadow that the Eternal? Eternal? Was that the Shadow Eternal? Of the Eternal, Artists, yeah. Um, spiritual successor or whatever? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, now, Dennis Tyak's had some issues in the past, both with, uh, I think, critics and the gaming community, and then yeah. um, just Big. some... <laughs> Yeah, we'll watch what we say about him, but it's, uh, I saw the, when he was on IGN, I saw the little gameplay demo or, or uh, cutscene or whatever that he had on there uh, for Shadow of the Eternals, and the first thing, she, he said it went on, it, it was running on Cry, CryEngine 3, and I thought, okay, this game looks awful, like, looks awful, uh, for a game running on CryEngine 3, yeah. and then there was talk that not only was it being on Kickstarter, but they were also doing, um, like donations from their website, and the difference with Kickstarter, there's a little bit more protection for uh, backers because exactly. you don't actually pay until you know it gets funded and, and they start making it. Um, but with this on the website, you were just depositing money, uh, and they ended up. I think, I think they closed down the Kickstarter and the uh, precursor page, but I do not believe that they gave the money back. I could be wrong on that, um, but this is just kind of a clear thing where I think. Uh, it's it's being misused. They're trying to kind of uh, well, well. First off, they left they left Silicon Knights 
yeah. uh, to form this company, and they claimed that they bought like computers and stuff, but they had wiped it of every uh, asset and whatnot, so they weren't using any. But <laughs> man, I, 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 I'm telling you, if you, if you, uh, if you back this program or if you back this game or anything that they're doing right now, you're kind of out of your mind because they have a terrible, terrible track record. Yeah. They've made one good original game and one pretty good remake. Or, yeah, I, I guess it technically was a remake, the uh, Metal Gear Solid. Besides yeah. that, they made Two Human, which is to date my least favorite game ever. <laughs> uh, I'm not exact. It's not the worst game I've ever played, but it's the game that I had the least amount of fun with. Uh, uh, that's quite the claim. <laughs> yeah. They, uh... They made X Men Destiny, which was awful. Oh man, I forgot about that. <laughs> and and besides that, like, hey, we're making this game again. It's I don't see what the appeal is. I don't trust them with it. I'd rather see another company. Uh, I think Nintendo actually still owns the IP. I'd like them to you know outsource it to a, a trustworthy developer and take a shot at an actual Eternal Darkness game because mm-hmm. some of the key mechanics of this game are still owned by Nintendo. Um, they can't make it for Shadow of the Eternals. The game, I just, I saw everyone freaking out about it, and I was saying, you're just freaking out about it because you like Eternal Darkness, and it has the name, and it's made by some of the same people involved. But the game itself looked awful to me. Yeah. Well, there's the there's the thing with Kickstarter, right? It, it's There's two sides to it. There's the horror stories of, you know, Shadow of the Eternals, but then there's also, you know, stuff with Double Fine, which I, I love Tim Schafer. A little weirdly, but um, I just put so much trust in him for some yeah. reason, no, and I want to see them succeed through that through that meeting. Right, uh, and they have a point in doing it through Kickstarter because one thing um, it's kind of in common with a, a director like David Lynch. They make really good stuff, and it always just bombs commercially. Uh, you mean? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think with Kickstarter, they can kind of circumvent that, and they can say, "Hey, we know you guys like our games." But investors have kind of picked up on the fact that they aren't going to sell well, so how about you guys help us out, and we'll make you games that you continue to like. Um, and from that perspective, I think Kickstarter is great for a company like Double Fine, who already have an established trust uh, uh, fan base that they, you know, that trusts them. Exactly. Uh, but there's just so many companies that I, I don't – like Obsidian trying to kickstart one of their projects? No. I saw that, yeah. Absolutely <laughs> not. No. I, I still think uh, investor investing is the traditional in the traditional manner for most uh, of those larger projects is the is the uh, more logical route. Now, I also really have an issue with the fact that if these projects blow up, the people who back them and you know finance their development, uh, they they get some you know free T-shirts or whatever. I think there should be some clause. It, it doesn't have to be mandatory, but in some of these things that. Hey, if you're backing our project, uh, after we are making a net profit, uh, maybe of a certain amount, you get a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percent of what that is. Ooh, that would be you. that would be something. But yeah. No one. Ah, oh, man, I couldn't see that happening. No. Honestly, but uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think that's the like with investors, they're getting a cut. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's the whole thing. And just giving uh, the people who backed it a tiny, 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 tiny piece. After it hits a net profit, I think would be, uh, to me, would be the logical thing to do. It, no, it's definitely the logical thing, but it, if you if the if you it's going consider the, the same grain, thing, yeah. the, the logistics of it. Imagine how many people are back in five dollars. How much does that entitle yeah, them there, to? Like, to? It would just be on this page instead of saying five dollars and you get a thank you in the credits. It would be five dollars and you get a millionth of a thousandth of a percent <laughs> net profit. Just, not making any money off it. But, no. yeah, I'm not one of those that thinks Kickstarter is going to supplant traditional investing, and I don't think that that's the future. I mean, it would be cool, I guess, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. The, the business models of things are too entrenched to let Kickstarter just kind of be like, hey, do whatever you want. You know, yeah, go money. And, it's, and it's just like, I think... Uh, it can be unfair to the consumer instead of going out and just buying this game and the company making their money and the investors being happy to say, hey, you guys have to pay into it and then and then we'll sell you our product or whatever. Um, but that, that's not to say that there can't be good to come out of it. I think there are going to be some good projects, but I just don't really think we've seen one uh, from completion that, that's really achieved that yet. Yeah, there's only uh, one that I can think of as, uh, that actually was looking a little bit fun as uh, Gianna Sisters, which was an old... Um, rip off of Super Mario Brothers back yeah. in the day, and then they made a DS game somehow. Like they brought it back, and then there was a Kickstarter, and then out, out. 
Yeah. Um, kind of weird history, but it is. And then, and then, like we forget that. I asked my mom if she knew what Kickstarter was, and she, you know, doesn't know anything about video games. Uh, and she did because it's so much more than video games. It's not yeah, exactly. It's not just the video game side. But uh, I've seen and comics I, and yeah. Music. And I think there's. I I know a lot of people are happy about like movies being made by these cult guys or whatever. But oh, Zach Braff. I lost my crap when I saw that Zach Braff was was kickstarting for like two million dollars. Like, dude, you're an established actor. It's not anyone else's fault that you really haven't found any roles since Scrubs. Uh, I love Zach Braff though. <laughs> it, it rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I don't know. It, Kickstarter is just well in that specific regard. You know, the Zach Braff thing. I personally didn't put money into it, but that's the thing is that. I feel like I can't complain because I don't have to put money into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if and you can argue, oh, they're taking advantage of the hardcore fans and stuff. It's like, well, there's a half and half there. There could be taking advantage or there could just be, you know, people that really want to help their, you know, favorite actor or their the whatever. And um, at this stage in in development of most of these projects, it looks it looks like it, it could be peaches and cream. But uh, what I'm saying is. It, I think that if we wait, we'll see a lot of these things really crash and burn, um, just because some of the, either they're inexperienced or stuff happens. Just behind the scenes, stuff happens, and a lot of people are going to be disappointed. Yeah, I now, don't, I don't see it <laughs> taking like there's going to be a huge amount of successes after the fact, after the fundraising part of it. Yeah, and, and I hope that you know, for indie games, especially some that uh, you know now that there's like self-publishing on PSN and. Uh, and Wii U, and there's talks of it actually going to be happening on on Xbox uh, hmm. now. Um, now they've gone back on their their title updates policy, so that's <laughs> a step in the right direction. Uh, but with stuff like that happening, kickstarting and then self publishing on consoles can get you a, a good audience. I just think that for for some of these established guys to then go back and try to use this indie scene kind of kind of thing to make their projects, um, it, it really rubs me the wrong way. I, yeah, I can see it. I can see that. Well, I think that uh, about wraps it up about Kickstarter and such. A yep. uh, good talk. <laughs> yeah, All get right. my get get my rage out. And this isn't something that I'm super super passionate about either way. I know there are a lot of there are a lot of issues that I am, and this one is kind of like I I have a couple a couple things to say about it. I wish I did, but um, I I, I don't think that this is going to be something that's going to be uh, talked about for too many more years as like, what's the pros or what's the cons? I think it's going to find its niche, and eventually it's going to settle in, and, and people are going to use it correctly. Um, but but as that's happening, some kinks are going to uh, get worked out, and they're going to be really, really interesting to watch.